Um, there is. Oh, thank you, because uh, I forgot about that. Um, welcome to the Chaos OSPO Metrics Working Group meeting. Uh, the meetings are recorded. You can leave your video on and off, on or off, up to you. Um, we do abide by the Chaos Code of Conduct, so please be kind to each other. Uh, the notes are in the chat. If, if you still need them, let, let us know and you can um, add yourself to the attendee list. And we have a few things on the agenda. There's still a little bit of room. There's a couple of add new items here sections. So if there's anything else you want to add to the agenda, um, go for it while we while we get started. So uh, Anna, I think you wanted to talk about the um, to do book chapter and give us give us some updates to, to fill you in. So I think you weren't in this last meeting. Um, and we we kind of had some questions about the structure of the book overall, you know, outside of just this the the metrics chapter. Mm -hmm. Because what we what we're kind of wondering is, you know, are there are there some things that other people are going to talk about that we should just take for granted? Is yeah. there sort of a framework that we're using for the book? How how is the book going to come together um, as a as a whole, as opposed to the individual chapters? So some of that insight, in addition to whatever updates you want to provide us, would be fab. Yeah, sure. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. One minute. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's always great when you put someone on the spot, and they're not quite ready for that. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So regarding the other chapter, so there is a a mailing list like a OSPO book working group mailing list I think many some people from here are also there and it's where all the notifications happens and so the structure is in the in the github repo uh we submit like PRs and the PRs have like a review period so for instance uh maybe it's better if I start my screen for you to to take a, a look on on how the structure works yeah, um, please. But, mm -hmm. And if any questions comes during my explanation, just feel free to just stop me. Uh, so in the uh, OSPA book, we have like uh, different Magdan files on chapter. So, so far we had a first community call to review the PR regarding chapter one and chapter two and the chapter zero. So if you go to its markdown, um, we have defined the scope of the book, what is not this book about, who should read the book. Uh, and then in chapter one is about introduction to open source program offices. And ideally the format of each chapter should have like an introduction, uh, some kind of assessment focus on that specific topic of the chapter. So for instance, if chapter seven is gonna be focused on uh, uh, OSPO metrics and uh, how OSPOs address, I don't know, open source sustainability through metrics, a way to do a search assessment on the level on how mature or maybe like some kind of maturity understanding of the metrics or are you ready for start establishing metrics on a specific topic or not? I'm just giving examples, but some kind of assessment that makes sense with the topic itself. Uh, then some kind of OSP anti pattern. So, for for instance, in this specific for the topic on OSP metrics, uh, what are the anti patterns on to to when when comes the time of establishing metrics? For instance, like maybe an, a good example can be like just thinking of metrics or just thinking of the quantitative. Uh, side on the on the reporting or uh making a set of metrics that owns is only uh valuable for the OSPO team and not for and not easy to understand for other teams just giving some examples and then some continue here resources so this will work as a well, as a set of um like book of knowledge so this is like for instance all the chaos resources and all the different uh, documentation on the metrics and how to establish a, a good uh, strategy around the metrics through the OSPO. If there's some documentation outside, have a continue here resources. So this 
will be more or less the kind of format we are looking for. Um, but it can change, like, as I said, if you in this in the chapter of metrics, you think that this format doesn't work, it's totally fine. So you can say in, for instance, in chapter one, we did a short introduction, um, we, we, we deep dive in the OSPO definition uh, that also lead us to, in, to update the OSPO definition that is in order of the OSPO uh, repos, uh, the story and roots of the term OSPO, assessing readiness of OSPO and so on. And then in chapter two, Maybe it's not here. Ah, oh, well, it's a work in progress because it's a PR. Uh, for this, if you see that the checks haven't not passed, it's not, it's, doesn't mean it's not working. It's just that we are trying to convert this into a PDF using Pandoc and the GitHub actions are not working. But it's it's working, like if you submit uh, PRs, it's, it's gonna work well. It's just that the, the GitHub actions are not working. But um, coming back to the topic, uh, so for instance, we are now having a review for chapter two. And so we basically, the process is, um, I'm basic, sometimes me or sometimes other person submit the PR, that is the baseline content. And then all the community starts at making their additions and contributions to that PR. And then we have like a final version and we merge that final version before uh, the, after the community call, we usually have like once per three months or so. The next one will be soon. And uh, it is intended to have a PR that contains the baseline for chapter two uh, three, four, and five. And uh, but if you, for instance, if on the other hand, this team is working on chapter seven, you can go ahead and start working on chapter seven. And then maybe with the with the content that keeps being updated, um, update the chapter seven. So it it depends. So any, I see someone said something in the chat. Um, I so I, I have a couple of questions. Hmm. Is there um, is there a document somewhere which describes what all of the chapters are going to be and kind of a little bit of description around those? Yes. So uh, if you go to docs, so there is a roadmap that we are not. We need to. It's like a deadline yeah so it has a broad map and then the chapters the interview questionnaire please check please sorry um roadmaps yeah. are blue sky kinds of things we, we yeah the ta 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 table versions. table of contents but we are you know, i need to update uh, that uh, sorry uh, should i just put all the code in the drive can we mute christine I'm hearing some noise from her. I don't have the host. Thanks. Thanks. Keep going, Anna. Yeah. So uh, regarding to your question, Don, this will be the chapters in um, table of contents markdown that needs to be updated because as the committee has been given input, um, we are restructuring a bit, but the titles will be the similar, same ones, but maybe the contents inside needs to be updated and maybe adding like a short description, as you mentioned, that right now we don't have. Yeah, a short description for each each of the chapters would be would be really um, helpful. You know, so one of the reasons that this this conversation came up in the first place was that we started talking about what we think a metrics chapter should have. Um, and I know you've heard me say this before because I say this all the time, but I think metrics um, need to be tied to the overall strategy for the open source program office. So what we were what we were trying to figure out and we weren't successful at figuring out is um, is, you know, in particular for this this question there, there were others, but this question is there is there a chapter that talks about how to build a strategy for your open source program office? and how you tie the open source program office's goals back into the overall goals of the organization yeah uh, so mm -hmm. yeah so that that is something that it's in, it it is included but we we need to deep dive and and see and ask for community feedback on on the once the yeah. pr is done 
because um, so so I'll, I'll give you a bit of feedback. I'll, I'll just give you a recommendation that I have, mm -hmm. um, which is that um, this appears to be very bottoms up driven, which is like lots of PRs with people with uh, opinions for how things are going to um, how things are going to evolve, and it's it's an organic approach. But that makes it really hard for the rest of us who are writing chapters because we don't know what information we have to rely on and build on. So if I don't know what's going to be in the um, chapter about strategy, it's really hard for me to write a chapter about metrics um, because what's going to happen, and I, I will guarantee that this will happen with the book, is that um, you know if it's done on kind of a chapter by chapter basis without um, a little bit of direction for the scope of those chapters, you will end up with a ton of duplicate content that we're going to have to merge out later. So you will end up with every single chapter having something about how to how to build your strategy so that they can then build on that for for the work that that they're doing. Um, oh no, Sean, I know you've edited a bunch of books. Is that consistent with what what you've seen? Well, I mean, when, when I've edited books, we really tried hard to lay out a structure for for the chapter so they had some consistency. Um, and we also tried to be clear about the purpose um when when soliciting authors for chapters and and i think i have an open issue and i haven't checked i, I apologize anna um if there's been a comment on it but my question is is <clears throat> in terms of the scope of the book what what is the are, are there is, is it kind of like this this is a predetermined structure and we have people writing chapters or are there opportunities to suggest content and then if someone does that is there a is there a chapter structure that could be followed to propose a chapter if that makes sense yeah so i've sir <laughs> so i think uh it will be more clear once we merge the pr that is related with the chapter on a strategy based on don's comments although we uh, we already have something that can act as a baseline on expectations. So what I've said is the chapter zero that talks about what is this book about? Like what are the expectations? What people might be finding this book? What is not this book? And who should read this book? And then there is a taxonomy markdown file that um, serves about like the expected structure of each of the chapters and the different categories that we might find. But again, I, this is like the baseline. And I think as uh, John was mentioning, if you want to deep dive more into the metrics content, uh, what I see clear is that you cannot uh, keep moving forward until the strategy chapter is merged. And when it's merged, it's merged. Like we might have like slightly uh, small comments later, but once it's merged, it means that the community, we already have the community call. The community had plenty of time to leave their comments, to share and to review. So that um, will happen. I hope that happens during this month. At least the PR opens this month and it's closed for next week, next month in July, if that can help. Any other questions for, for Anna before we move on to the, the next item on the agenda? Post a, a question in the chat um, about uh, where to. Uh, like there is actually a a, 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 a issue already about a proposal for additional topics, uh, recent development outlook. So you have a proposal for new topics. Should we just add to that particular issue? So you can add it to Gare. So I think it was Gare, uh, the one that added that uh, that is specific issue. If it's something related with the recent trends and open source, uh, it makes sense to include that and leave a comment to girls issue. If it's a completely different suggestion, I my suggestion is just to open an issue and the maintainers of the Ospology repo, what they will do is tag it as an OSP book uh, issue and we and we will uh, promote during in the mailing list. Okay, got it, thanks. Thank you.
Any other questions for Anna? Um, so I I thank you, Anna, for I'm I mean walking us through this. It's my first time on this call and in this meeting. So um I also did realize that there's a contributing um markdown like document there, which um I mean doesn't have enough like details. So if I, I'm not sure what the plans are for that, but I'll I would be interested in um, learning more about like the different um, ways that people can contribute to this, like there, yeah. Yeah, so um, to be honest, so the, uh, the contributing Martin file needs to be also updated. Like we, we started like as a baseline and as the community organically grows, we might need to be like more specific on certain topics. So I'm glad you asked and I'm glad you raised this issue because it means that maybe we need to uh, add more documentation to the contributing file. So far, the process is if a person contributes to the pull request and attends to the community meetings and shares their thoughts and contributes in the mailing list, uh, the, that person can request to be a contributor. They can request it through the mailing list or opening an issue. And uh, we will add them to the contributing uh, markdown file if uh, uh, we, we will add like, well, where were your contributions? And since this project is quite recent, it's quite easy to track that. And, and that's all. I mean, everyone is welcome to contribute. And um, if you have any issues on contributing to a specific topic, just uh, let us know and we will make sure that you have all the access and rights to, to do so. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next uh, agenda item. So we talked in the last meeting a lot about um, project viability and uh, metrics associated with it. And I think Gary has done some some work on this at uh, Verizon. And um, yeah, with that, I'll turn it over to you, Gary, and you can tell us what you what you've learned. Thanks, Don. Uh, yeah, feel free I to wanna... share your screen if you want to. Um, no. Oh questions. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Um, I should probably do that, huh? Because otherwise, this is going to be a lot it of is, talking. It is recorded, so anything that you share is going to be recorded. Just a reminder. Okay, I, I'm not sure if I can yet, so I will. Uh, Fair enough. I'm having an interesting conversation with Verizon because they don't even want me to like have access to this document, uh, this public document with my Verizon account. I always have to open like an incognito window to to participate in the meeting notes. So they might not be happy if I showed you a Google Doc that that isn't in a shared drive. Um, anyway, uh, I, I wanted to start off by kind of setting the stage of, of uh, why I was doing this. Um, we're looking at project viability as something that's quantifiable in a set of metrics because we want to be able to give people a reason at uh, Verizon why you should or should not prefer to use particular open source uh, libraries and projects. And we're looking at this specifically as a uh, way to drive stability and drive uh, less sprawl in how many dependencies people decide to use, because we've found that uh, across the different domains that Verizon operates in, which include like physical products, routers that get shipped to your house and data centers that run entire cell towers and a global network of, of connectivity and, you know, websites to manage everything that you might want to do with Verizon and, and customer service and tracking packages and et cetera, et cetera people have chosen to make a lot of different decisions about how to build and run those systems. And we're trying to figure out how thin that can really get and how much overlap there really is. Um, so like a, an idea of viability that can apply more generally than on Java projects, this makes it viable or on this particular uh, set of criteria, it makes it viable. How do we think about open source in general and what makes a project usable as, as a largely regulated entity? Um, I wanted to do uh, this mostly through chaos because I think that this working group in previous positions, I've always noticed that the metrics focus and the amount of rigor that goes into what metrics belong in OSPOs has been very high. 
and I was interested in in uh, kind of using that prior art to help build this model. And I haven't actually gotten anywhere um, coming up with anything that uh, that hasn't already been discussed, which was also part of the exercise. I wanted to make sure that I I wasn't missing anything and that I couldn't think of anything that that the chaos group hadn't thought of. So unfortunately, I don't have any more exciting metrics to contribute, but I do have a model of metrics that I'd like to share. So there's plenty of nuance and overlap between these buckets uh, of like what makes a viable product, but I want to break it down into three big buckets of compliance, security, vulnerability, uh, reliability and governance, and then community and agility. I'll, I'll wait a second because I can see that you're taking notes. Um, so compliance, vulnerability and security, reliability and governance, and Wait, then- Sorry, what was the first one? Yeah, the first one oh, is compliance, you. vulnerability and security all together, because I think those three things are pretty tightly related. The second bucket is reliability Thanks. and governance. And the third bucket is community and agility. All right, so for compliance, vulnerability and security, um, oh, I'm sorry, something that I didn't mention before I get in the buckets. Uh, as a consumer of open source, Many of the metrics that are available on Chaos um, pertain to running events and how to measure success of community. And those aren't things that I think are hugely important for uh, large consumers of open source and are more important for maintainers of open source. And so as I'm going through kind of what I think is important, I wanna keep that in mind that I'm not right now looking at, is this project maintainable? I'm looking at, is this project viable to use? So. All right, uh, for compliance, vulnerability, and security, obviously OpenSSF has a set of best practices. They have scorecards. They have a lot of um, important ways to measure a project's security success. That OpenSSF best practices is a metric that I'm very interested in using to measure uh, the security of a product. Obviously, uh, or I'm, I'm gonna stop saying obviously because I'll say it over and over again, licensing, is another important part of uh, compliance for us because we have to make sure that we can actually use the thing. Um, there's a lot of license criteria that are available uh, through chaos metrics, including the license coverage, if it's an OSI approved license, or if it's even got a license declared on the dependency. And then uh, lib years is another one that I think is going to be very useful being able to see how old a dependency or how old the dependencies of the dependency are is going to give us a great idea of like, do they keep up with um, security patches and vulnerability scanning? Um, the higher the lib year gets, the more likely that they are not keeping up with it. Uh, and upstream, upstream code dependencies when available, uh, we're very interested in and, and we want to keep track of. So I'll pause there. I said a whole lot of things and say, uh, see if anybody wants to jump in and kind of discuss that first bucket of compliance, vulnerability, and security. Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm gonna keep yammering. Um, so reliability and governance. Uh, we got into a lot of different metrics here, uh, including programming language distribution, issues inclusivity, whether or not, um, it, the issues are welcoming and giving people the opportunity to contribute felt important because if there's not a community focus with how we're labeling issues and putting issues together, that feels like the governance of the project uh, needs to have some more thought put behind that. Hello, Sophia, are you just uh, clicking around or do you have something to say? Sorry, no, I, I did, but I didn't want to interrupt you, so keep going. No, that's okay. I have this all written down so I can I can resume. <laughs> I was just thinking about the first part. Um, and I don't know how much you want to muddy this up. I know you're, you're focusing on chaos message specifically, but when I think about compliance, I'm also thinking about company compliance, mm -hmm. uh, where you might have like, I work at Google, it's probably not a surprise that we have a fairly rigorous compliance office around what we expect around software code quality, maintenance quality and sort of other characteristics that might not just be these sort of standard metrics, but also more operationally minded metrics that um, are aligned with your own compliance and policy. So I didn't know if you wanted to account for that, but just like 
I think these, these are great metrics in general, but there's always a sort of like in company context that I don't know because right. I don't work at Verizon, but there might be specific things that you can or you have to align with because those are just your internal compliance practices. Yeah, I, that's a good point to bring up because I think um, one thing I do know about Google's compliance is there's no AGPL whatsoever for any reason, um, or so says uh, opensource.google, I think. And I think that we don't have like a lot of really hard and fast rules like that um, because the products do have to vary as much as they do. I know Google also varies widely in the amount of products that they create because they have probably a lot of the same constraints with their uh, Phi product. But I think that um, the internal context is is definitely wrapped into compliance, vulnerability, and security, right? Uh, that's a really good point to bring up, that if you have extra context to bring up, that 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 does fit there. I just am not sharing that now because I, I don't think that I can. Um, all right, so back to reliability and governance. Uh, so leaving off of, with in issues inclusivity, basically making sure that there's good labels and there's good governance on issues. Um, documentation usability feels really important because if uh, we can't expect to actually learn how to use the project or it's not very easy to learn how to use the project, um, I'm thinking about this in terms of like, is there even a doc site? Is the doc site even regularly updated? Is there a way for us to measure that? That feels like something that we can compare between projects we know that we use very well and projects that we are evaluating to see what that usability score comes out to. Um, time to close, uh, issues and, and defects and problems. Uh, those things feel like governance issues to me because I think that uh, they largely depend on the maintainers of the project. They largely depend on um, the governance around what their targets are for being able to resolve issues and respond to defects, uh, especially defects in particular, because uh, ideally a vulnerability is disclosed to the maintainers of a project before it's posted to any kind of public site. So their resolution is dependent um, highly on when they receive that, that defect and when they resolve it. All right. Uh, there's a lot of overlap here between reliability and governance and community and agility. And so rather than say all of the metrics that they share twice, I'm just going to say them for reliability and governance and say that all of these are shared. Uh, change request closure ratio, the bus factor and elephant factor, both of which I thought were fantastic names for great metrics of like, if something gets hit by a bus or if the elephant decides to leave, like what happens to the project. Uh, project popularity, um, organizational influence, you know, uh, could a competitor be the top influencer on the project? Should we be using it at that point? Um, upstream code dependencies and issue age and release frequency. So all these metrics kind of get shared between community and reliability um, buckets. And yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about them in terms of like all of the reasons that I think should be evident from those particular ones. I'm realizing now I should definitely share a version of this in a Google Doc because I'm droning on about uh, metrics and numbers that I'm, I'm positive nobody has every single one of these in their head. Uh, community and agility, the last thing. Um, things that only belong here are clones, how much people are pulling the project and playing with it. Forks, how many people are contributing to the project or maybe making their own version of the project. Uh, types of contributions, whether it's a lot of um, if it's mostly code or if it's a lot of issues or if it's a lot of uh, other kinds of contributions that we can trace, then that's interesting and important to know because I, I think it would indicate that there's not a whole lot of transparency if there's only contributions that are coming in as code and there's not issues tied to them. Uh, change requests uh, kind of fits that same narrative of uh, people do reviewing and evaluating their code in a way that's transparent and open. And uh, committers, just counting how many people are uh, if working on the project, I think can be useful as a measure of popularity over time to say that the committers either jumped or dropped on specific times or regarding specific decisions around the project. So I plan on using a collection of these metrics to um, make determinations about how these buckets score and then give recommendations of either this is something that Verizon can use in all of their projects, this is something that Verizon can only use in some projects, or this is something that Verizon can't use at all, um, or they can use it on everything. Um, 
as that gets more and more uh, nuanced, I'm sure that I'll have more interesting discussions to bring up about very specific parts of this model. So that's kind of my spiel. That's everything that I've been compiling from chaos. Uh, I will very happily share Grimoire Lab links uh, when I get them set up and as long as I can. Um, if not, I'll get clear to share screenshots because I think that this stuff would be a pretty cool dashboard. There is a question from Justin in the chat. Okay, cool. About how you're thinking of using the same set of metrics for dependencies used directly by humans and dependencies largely used as secondary or tertiary dependencies. Yeah, that's um, a great question, um, because I think that we're going to normalize it across a couple of different metrics, where if uh, lib years is never, ever going to be zero, nobody is ever completely up to date with all of the dependencies that they use in a project. Um, but if we're seeing an average of like generally higher on one project in that uh, ecosystem compared to another project in the ecosystem, so I'm picturing two projects that both use uh, NPM and both stay on the the most old long-term service, then that should normalize between those two, that we can make kind of an apples to apples comparison. Uh, the it, it It's like a difficult problem and it does at the end of the day kind of need to be a judgment call of like, do we think that this project is viable? Here's some metrics that we have and here's the reasoning that we used with those metrics to make this choice. I think that this nuance of like um, direct dependencies versus secondary or tertiary dependencies is going to be very much part of that, that we're trying to back up with metrics, but is pretty hard to make as a call that isn't also um, somewhat like a determination from somebody who actually works in the open source program office. We should also talk as you as you start to develop this more about whether we should turn this into one or more metrics models. Um, yeah, you know, formally metrics model from within the within the chaos project as opposed to the model of how you're thinking about metrics. Um, and this is this is a lot for one metrics model, so maybe it's maybe it's a couple of them. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I would I would keep that in the back of your mind because I I think that um, you're putting an awful lot of of thought into this. And this is something that's incredibly important for lots of lots of OSPOs. And so I right, think yeah. having a metrics model around it would be particularly interesting. And then I, yeah. I might start. Go ahead. I might sorry. start. I might start with um just you have your three categories and maybe just a metrics model into those categories is one way to think about you know, creating smaller metric not smaller metrics models just because large metrics models are sort of like large pull requests. They're hard to Hard to integrate, <clears throat> hard to make Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm realizing by actually presenting this and talking to you guys who do know a lot about this, I'm like, wow, I'm droning on for quite a while about a bunch of metrics. It would be better if I could say um, exactly what you just mentioned. Um, I, I put these in buckets because I realized that having 20 metrics next to each other means nothing. And so if I can do buckets of those metrics and say, yeah, these overlap, but that's why there are two models that I also use to just kind of make this happen. Um, that would be really good. So I missed the metrics models meeting this week, but I will be there next time to pitch these models. I think there was awesome. one last week. I don't think there was one this week, or maybe I missed it. Oh, might have uh, been last week that I missed. It's every other every other week. Um, Anna, you have a question? Yeah. So uh, regarding uh, the buckets that you commented, and as a way maybe to try to align uh, with all the working groups that I've seen that they are somehow like working on, on the wording and, and having like a common language. So uh, one of the things that were discussed when creating the OSPO definition next release was to define the OSPO in like, what is the OSPO, how is the OSPO evolving and who is in the OSPO. And one, one of the sentences working on a framework on compliance and security, community governance, so developing a, a framework that has these three buckets, and I think there was a missing one, but maybe since the OSPO definition might have that, and it's like a broad term like governance, community, and compliance, and the same as Gary was mentioning, these three buckets, 
maybe when developing this metrics model, uh, having the same wording uh, might be useful. And with that, I want to ask, do you think this is a, the right model to like the right wording to use uh, for the like, let, let me find again where where it is so I can just yeah, sure. said. Hmm. Um, Yeah, so answering the how is the way people behind an OSP achieve this is by creating and maintaining a framework covering the following aspects, strategy, governance, compliance, and community. So does it make sense to cover this set of metrics? Like it's quite similar to what the back of that Gary was mentioning, but just adding the, uh, I think it was the strategy point of view and, and having this common wording. Yeah, I think strategy is tricky because I think I I mentioned with Sophia that when you're um in some entities it's it's pretty okay to be a little open about what your tech strategy is and in some entities you're not allowed to do that at all. Um and I think I'd have to think about that. I I don't think the answer is no, but I do think that I I'm thinking hard about what these buckets like should be. And I just I have switched these like four times. I put compliance with governance and then I put vulnerability with community. And like I I I've picked these a little particularly based on the metrics that I thought were strong fits for Verizon. And that was not like a one pass thing. So I, I'm happy to look at it and I'm happy to evaluate, but I, I can't say for sure that I think that that's that's the right wording necessarily. The other two definitely fit, but I don't know if strategy does. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for Gary? I see uh, Chan had praise. Thank you, Chan. Uh, and then uh, Anna, oh, Anna, you just posted. I thought it was something else. Okay, I'm gonna paste this so that I can look at it while I'm reading through this. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for um, for all of the the updates, uh, this is this is an incredible amount of of work and thinking about something for um, in, a, in a relatively short amount of time. And we we appreciate you taking the time out to to share this with us because I do think it's a really I think it's a really interesting way of looking at project viability for sure. Um, and I yeah, and I look forward to hopefully collaborating on some of the the metrics models that might eventually come out of this. Totally. Thanks, John. Cool. Thank you. Um, agenda items for next week. Is there anything that um, people want to talk about next week? I'm sorry, not next week, in two weeks. Because as a reminder, anybody can put things on the agenda. This is not just not just me making people talk about stuff. You can suggest things on your own that you might want to talk about. Um, one, one. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would say if you think of any things, um, feel free to start the agenda for next week. Um, we do have one thing that is already on the agenda for next week, and that is the um, maturity model that Matt wanted to talk about. So I, I punted this to next week because Matt's, I think, uh, moving a kid into college. So it's that, that time of year. Um, so he should be around for the for the next meeting. So he can talk about the the maturity model, which I think will be will be really interesting to talk about. Anything else anyone wants to wants to bring up in the remaining eight minutes that we have left, or three minutes that we have left? I can't remember how long these meetings are. Elizabeth, keep me on track. Do we end at a quarter till or ten till? I know I asked you yeah. this like a million times. Technically, a ten till, but. If you know if it's over, it's over. We're good. <laughs> okay, so you have seven minutes if you have any final questions, and then if not, we'll just uh, call it a meeting and come back in two weeks. I don't. I don't have any questions, but I have a comment. I think hearing um, about the book chapters and um, some of the documentation, along with Gary's ideas for um, some models, I think this is exactly what um, Ospos need, and so. 
we can keep those conversations going, that'd be great. And um, I really, I really enjoyed today's meeting. So thank you all. Okay. Thanks, Chen. Thanks everybody for joining and uh, we'll, we'll see you around the community. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.